letting your sensory story start with a step, a touch, to feel the grass, to feel the senses, to feel the movement, soft, not just on the hands, but on the feet, on the body, and everything around you. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Nicky, <coughs> Nicky Fawcett and I am a Tai Chi practitioner, Tai Chi teacher and I am very good friends with Joanna Grace, I've known Joanna for three years and I met Joanna on, Joanna on, um, on one of her training days, she was doing a very good training day for um, the company I worked for at the time and the training was called Sensory Beings for Sensory Beings. <coughs> um, and Joanna asked me if I wanted to take part in this wonderful conference she's doing for PDML Link. Um, Profound Multiple Learning Disabilities Link. Um, I've worked with people with autism, um, adults with children, you know, adults with uh, physical disabilities, learning disabilities, profound multiple learning disabilities, people with dementia, sensory so associated conditions. I've, I've worked in, in this field for 13 years, um, and prior to that, with dementia, with eight, so a total of 20 years I've worked in that 20 years, 20, 21 years, 22 years in that field. Um, I first started teaching Tai Chi four years ago. Uh, I was working for in day service at the time with some lovely, wonderful people, 
all of them had autism or learning disability. Some have physical disabilities. And <clears throat> I've, I've been doing Tai Chi for six and a half years, seven years. I've been teaching for four years. Um, when I first started doing Tai Chi, uh, it kind of just come into my life. I've always done some sort of martial art, but when I started learning Tai Chi and attending the classes, it becomes so much more, um, not just for myself, but uh, you know, when I learned about my body, my senses, um, <clears throat> the world around me is so different. Um, I was diagnosed with autism last year, January 2020. I was diagnosed with uh, also a sensory condition called synesthesia, some people call it, also pronounce it as synesthesia. Um, and I was also uh, alongside with the dual diagnosis of autism, also diagnosed with dyscapula. So, um, so I've, I've never been very good with numbers, so then I knew why. But I was, I was always very different. I always felt very different at school and part of my family and how I would um, engage and associate myself with other people. Um, <clears throat> but when I started to learn Tai Chi, um, it helped me to engage more with people. It helped me to, it built up my relationships with people and myself, um, and also for my own well-being. Um, but one of the things I noticed that with Tai Chi, with my synesthesia, which is, if people aren't aware of what synesthesia is, it's a condition where it's a it's a sensory condition where you experience more than one sense at a time. So you could taste a smell or touch a sound um, and it made me think about when I do the Tai Chi and the, the soft movements and everything it, it made me want to um, I wanted to build a new world for people I wanted to give people um, people with learning disabilities people with autism um, a, a, a chance to learn something different to be able to carry that that over to other people, um, to people who haven't had the opportunity to do those things before, to build bridges, to build relationships, most importantly to build build up relationships for themselves, to make them feel good about themselves. Um, so I've created the Tai Chi project, the Sensory Tai Chi project, um, and I've run that for four years. Um, it involves various different soft movements, um, sensory sounds, sensory move, sensory um, touches, sensory environment. We're in a, a very sensory environment right now. Um, it's very quiet. It's very calm. You can hear the wind blowing. I can feel whenever I've done my form or Tai Chi form, I feel so much more sensitive to the things around me. Um, I first, when I first started doing Tai Chi, um, and let me explain a bit more about Tai Chi. So Tai Chi itself is, it is a Chinese martial art, but it's what is called a Chinese internal martial art, which means inside, soft. Um, it can be used for exercise, it can be used for meditation, it can be used for building up your, your, um, your immune system for, um, for fighting any sort of infections or anything like that. Um, just general will build, building up your well-being um, to, to lower your blood pressure, to um, also to, to, to better coordination. There's so, so many things what I've learned from by just teaching the Tai Chi and learning it myself from other people, um, what it does. But the most importantly about it is when people, when you hear, when you say to people, people like about love Tai Chi, you teach it to people with learning disabilities and autism, people go, well, how do you do that then? It's very easy. It's very, very easy. Um, and it's almost like that you're speaking, not a different language, but you're speaking with your senses. Um, this year, I got from Hobbycraft a piece of, soft material um, as soon as I touch it it makes me feel soft 
inside and I associate that by touch again it's with the senses I associate I associate that when I do the movements um, when I move my body in a different way um, but Tai Chi the magic one of the magical things about Tai Chi is that it can be done sitting down it can be done standing up um, it can be done any people in you know wheelchair wheelchairs are used can, use, can do Tai Chi um, somebody with dementia anybody with dementia can do Tai Chi um, so it doesn't matter what type of injury you've got or what type of condition you have um, it's about it's not just about doing the movements but it's also the sensory world around you um, within with the movements and itself I, I've, I've created um, so when you look at the when you look at the signing you know when you look at BSL language um, you know, British <coughs> British sign language and when you look at Makaton it's a form of signing it's a form of communication so with Tai Chi I learned that it can be used as a full form of communication for people who might not be able to speak for people who are non-verbal or unable to speak um, but that's not the right word they just speak in a different way the people to some people we all communicate in different ways and um, be able to do movements and to stem because when when I, I found when I when I would do the form the Tai Chi form I would stem it I would it, I wouldn't I'd be I'd find very be very relaxed very calm um, it keeps me together it centers me it allows me to focus on something um, but to be able to do that and to be able to build that bridge with um, people with profound multiple learning disabilities um, is something I've found what can be done um, in fact what we're going to do we're going to very quickly do a couple of movements just together just to see what everyone thinks so just stand relaxed in a nice relaxed posture you don't have to wear a piece of material I'm going to wear a piece of material because it relaxes me um, I'm just going to very gently so I'm going to stand nice and close to make sure your legs are nice and relaxed make sure your back is nice and relaxed those who are sitting down you can do the sitting down so make sure you've got a nice relaxed posture against your chair nice and relaxed just simply relax your arms so they're nice and soft now the best way to explain this is that imagine that your arms are like babies baby arms just relax they're soft floppy your body's nice and floppy now if you've got a piece of material attached to your arm point picture that soft piece of material how it makes you feel inside how it makes you feel in your stomach how it makes you feel in the palm of your hands how it makes you feel in here in here okay then relax we're going to put our arms down just gently together very gently now we're going to do a move, it's called raised hands, it's very soft again, so it's important to keep the, eye, the hands as open like that, as open like that, put your hands down, now if some people have got, um, can't, can't open their hands like that, then they can just relax them like that, doesn't matter, you can do it one handed as well, it's very gently, very very gently, now as you bring your arms up, you're going to gently, very gently breathe in. So you're not going to raise the arms any higher than the shoulders. You're going to very gently breathe in. Now, watch my hands. My hands gently come up. My wrists gently go back down. So it's soft as if I'm touching something. As if this material I have on my hand is allowing me to feel the movements even more softer, and lighter. So I'll breathe in and I'll breathe out. Now we're going to very gently do another move it's called throwing the dragon's tail. Now very gently I turn my waist to my right. My arms almost like a rainbow and I turn my arms across. And then back 
back to hold the ball. Bend my knees ever so slightly, hold the ball. I just turn very gently to my right. So I'm going to turn my bottom hand upwards and then very gently step forwards. Very gently step forwards in a line like a cross line coming forward. Nice and soft. I'm going to hold my hand up like that. Slump and fly. Slump and fly. Now bring your hand simply back down and step in. Nice and soft. Each movement tells a story. Each set of movements tells a sensory story. And it allows people to uh, communicate in ways in which other people thought they couldn't. Other ways in which you'd maybe possibly didn't understand a different person. Um, I learn all the time. Every time I teach something, I teach a class to someone. Um, I teach someone new. I always learn something from them. Um, so there's so much, there's so much um, with Tai Chi, what it can do for you and what the internal arts can do for you. Um, but most of all, it's important is to be comfortable in that, to be comfortable in who you are, to be comfortable in what you are, whether it's a disability, whether it's a, whether you're autistic, whether you're, whether a person's got mental health, whether a person's got a physical disability, if someone's a wheelchair user, it doesn't matter. Most importantly, Tai Chi's taught me to be myself um, and to share a different world with other people. Um, it, movement in a sensory world. That's what it's taught me. It's taught me to be able to use my body to communicate with other people um, in a way in which I'd never thought I could before. Um, Tai Chi isn't just, just just a type of movement, it's a type of sensory movement um, and it lights up all your all your senses all over your body. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Joanna and for everyone who's watched this video um, and hopefully, hopefully you all enjoyed it um, and to have also to have listened to my story, to have shared that with you. Um, if again you ever want any more, if you need, need any more any questions or anything else that you might want to ask, please feel free to um, have a look at my website. It's um, Tai Chi Simplicity um, dot co dot uk, and my email address is um, Tai Chi Simplicity at gmail dot com. Or you can find me on Facebook as well, or you can just drop Joanna Joanna a message. Um, going forward, so I, I want to, uh, what, what I'm going, you know, I, I want to engage this more in a, in a world for people with multiple learning disabilities and to explore that with them, to explore a whole new world with them, to use different, different props, different movements, um, different understanding for everybody. Um, and most importantly, to give them a chance of something what they've not never experienced before um, and and myself um, I hope you've all enjoyed it take care uh, and I'll see you all soon bye for now